Wendy Williams is feuding with Paris Jackson again. Mama Braxton offers some words of advice for her son-in-law. Donna Brazil's new book is causing quite a stir. Jay-Z to get a huge honor. OJ throws shade at Caitlyn Jenner. Vivica A. Fox still loves 50 Cent. And we have our photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cott. And I'm Keisha Wilson, sitting in for Onika McLean. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Kizzy. <laughs> Thank you for like, blessing us with a little sports flavor, you know, <laughs> boom. So thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So we're going to get started with some quick takes. And rapper and business mogul Jay-Z will receive a 2018 Grammy Salute to Industry Icons Award. So this will be his 22nd. Grammy Award. Jigga what? I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been a big year for him. He also became the first rapper to be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So he's doing doing great. And he's Beyonce's husband. Hashtag winning. Oh, snap. <laughs> Kizzy, as you and our friends watching may know, mm -hmm. actor and singer Tyrese is embroiled in a bitter custody battle yes, with his ex-wife, yes. Norma Mitchell Gibson, over their 10-year-old daughter. Recently, a court ordered both Tyrese and his ex-wife to remove all videos and photographs from their respective social media accounts. Now, this is according to TheBlast.com. Listen, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, they really need to stop, stop all that, for real. And to the surprise of absolutely no one, <laughs> Star Jones' ex-husband, Al Reynolds finally confirms that he is bisexual. I'm going to file that under thank you, Captain Obvious, and how you doing? <laughs> oh, no. How you doing? How you doing? you doing? For those who watch Wendy Williams for the long time know what we're talking about. Yes. yes. <laughs> Actress and producer Vivica, Vivica A. Fox mm -hmm. recently told Dish Nation that Curtis 50 Cent Jackson is, quote, definitely the love of my life. I'll never deny that. End quote. I ne she needs to move on. I just don't like that at all. I don't think that Vivica <laughs> needs to like be messing around with 50 Cent at all. I think he's going to play her. I don't think that he has the maturity that she deserves. I really don't. Well, she has a pattern. So if you look at her dating mm. history, she has a little bit of a pattern. Mm. Like the thugged <laughs> out, huh? <laughs> just a little bit. You need to stop. Um, so someone else who needs to stop, OJ. <laughs> so he threw some shade at Caitlyn Jenner. Upon learning that Caitlyn Jenner and Kris Jenner still believe that he killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, OJ told Vlad TV, quote, I don't know Caitlyn, but as far as Bruce was concerned, I really didn't know him that well. But if he wants to choose his life as an old lady instead of an old man, hey, women live longer, so he might be on to something. OJ, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> just, just go OJ. somewhere and hide. We don't want to hear from you. Just stop. OJ with the shade. <laughs> so shady. So shady. With the shade. Well, everybody, get your reading glasses ready because BookCon 2018 is on the way. The BookCon 2018 will feature Hollywood stars such as Tay Diggs and Diane Guerrero, who you may know as Maritza on Orange is the New oh, Black. Nice. nice. Very In nice. addition to Tay Diggs and Diane Guerrero, there will be best selling authors Angie Thomas, Jason Reynolds, Cami Garcia and Marissa Meyer. BookCon 2018 will take place at the Javits Center in New York City on June 2nd and June 3rd of 2018. Nice. Now, Kizzy, as a, you know, a little bit of tragic type news, and you remember with the Harvey Weinstein yes. a, oh a my situation gosh, talked with about the, that. It's been crazy, yeah. <laughs> with once one allegation of sexual misconduct came to light. The floodgates opened and more women came forward. Now, recently, it has been young men who have come forward alleging mm. sexual misconduct against um, actor Kevin Spacey. Wow. Which was a little bit of a shock to me. Yeah, I and know, right? <laughs> I, was, I was super shocked. I'm like, really, Kevin Spacey? Dang. Spacey. Like, at this point, it's like, who hasn't? Right. been a sexual harasser or assaulted somebody. It's crazy. Right. In light of these recent allegations, Kevin Spacey is now out of a job as Netflix has chosen to cancel his series, House of Courts. Yeah. And I hear there was another movie that he'd already wrapped that he was producing on that has also been shelved. So 
Mm, Kevin Spacey, Ooh. hey, you're done, you're done. Try to deflect and talk about how you were gay, but it didn't work. You're out of a job now. And Sean Combs, you know Sean Combs. Puffy, Puff, Puff yeah. Daddy. Yes, Diddy, <laughs> P that, Diddy. That, what? <laughs> All of that. Well, now he's decided to change his name again. And this time he wants to be called Love or Brother Love. So while we were all spinning about that, oh my God, oh my God, he came back and said, nah, he's just joking. So maybe you should change his name to the Joker next time. Oh, I like that. Shoot. Burn. And on that note, while you guys reflect, keep it locked. We'll be right back with What's Poppin'. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Never. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to What's the 411. Wendy Williams is at it again. Talk show host Wendy Williams is in yet another feud with Paris Jackson. This time over her grandmother, Catherine Jackson's oh, need to give up her guardianship of Prince Michael Jackson II, who we know as Blanket. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Williams tweeted that the story about Catherine Jackson will be on her list of hot topics uh, for her show, which prompted Paris to fire back via Twitter, quote, your obsession is a little unhealthy, maybe even toxic, yep. end quote. Yep. Kizzy, do you think that Paris Jackson is right that Wendy Williams is obsessed with the Jackson family, or is Wendy just doing what the people want, giving oh the people what my they want? Gosh. Oh my gosh! You know what? I do think that Wendy Williams is obsessed, but I think she's as obsessed as everybody is. You know what I mean? Anytime the Jackson kids, the Jackson clan, in fact, does anything, people want to know. Um, you know, I wanted to know even how they would grow up. You know, mm -hmm. if they would have problems with addiction, you know, given what happened with their father. You know, if they would grow up, you know, under the, the hot lights of fame and, and, and panic and, and act out and stuff like that. So, yes, there is an obsession, but it's an obsession that a lot of people share. But on the other hand, I do think that William, Wendy Williams sometimes is out of line. Like, you remember like a few months ago, I, mean, I guess earlier this year, when I think Par like, Par um. Oh, the Rolling Paris Stone. was on, yeah, on the cover of Rolling Stone. And then Wendy was like, oh my gosh, you don't just roll up on Rolling Stone and not have anything really to say, but I was born of this person and da 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 da. You know, you, don't, you mm -hmm. have to earn this. And also told her, oh, well, I don't think you can call yourself black. I mean, we're not looking at you from like, you know, what you calling yourself. We're looking at, oh, what the cops see. Mm -hmm. When they see you on the street, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, she's she's come for her in ways that are really, like, inappropriate. But that's what Wendy does. Right. She's an, she inappropriate. <laughs> she's, she's inappropriate all the way around. Yeah. So, what do you think? Well, I wouldn't call it obsession. I, I just think that she's doing what has made her famous and mm -hmm. what has made, put her in the position that she's in. For those who don't know, Wendy Williams was on the radio for decades and this was her style yeah. of radio she it was, was worse it was worse <laughs> and she's and she's she's been run out of new york city for a period of time she was in philly by diddy um diddy Love method man you problem. take <laughs> take your pick there were p plenty of people aiming to get wendy williams out of new york city right. so this has been her brand and she's not going to change and she's doing what um, is interest of interest to people mm -hmm. in pop culture. Right. And Paris Jackson is old enough and I think smart enough to know that she is part of an iconic family. Right. And this has been that way before she was born. Before Paris Jackson, mm -hmm. Blanket, and the, the other brother, she, the oldest she, brother, she, yeah, yeah. Um, were even thought of, the Jacksons were a part of American culture. So anything that they did made news. Right. So if Paris Jackson wants to fire back at Wendy for this particular story, then she needs to cast her net a little further out because I'm sure Wendy Williams wasn't the only person to report on this story. I read it. Mm -hmm. I read it other places because it's news. It's right. Catherine Jackson. It's... Michael Jackson's children, it's going to be news. So, I mean, I think it goes back more towards history. Like you said, the Rolling Stone uh, cover right. that Paris Jackson did and the articles and things that she said. And I think, obviously, Paris 
probably took offense to Wendy's. Exactly, and so, so now I she's think like, this is you know more uh, indicative of that than, than just she's just reporting on the story. Right. <laughs> wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh, soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. So, we reported on a previous episode that Tamar Braxton has filed for divorce from her husband, Vincent Herbert. Aw. Mm -hmm. Well, Tamar's mother is not here for that. <laughs> um, Evelyn Braxton has let the world know through TMZ that Vincent was abusive. Mm -hmm. um, she said mm -hmm. to TMZ, quote, I love Vince, but I don't want him to kill my child. As simple as that. He needs to, quote, keep his hands off of my child, stop before he hurts her or kills her. Wow, yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> she wasn't playing any game. So she's like, you know, she doesn't really want them to reconcile, but certainly if they were, she really wants him to get counseling. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, Keisha, is um, would you... Consider, if your husband, for example, put his hands on you, would you consider going back to him if he got counseling first? Well, can I just first say that when I first saw Tamar and Vince on camera, I think during the family Braxton, mm -hmm. the Braxton Family Value yeah. show, that relationship made me very uncomfortable. Why? I, what was it about it that was like, I uh, did not like the way they talked to each other. It just made me very uncomfortable. Yeah. I would not, I did not think there was physical abuse. So I was really surprised when I uh, saw the TMZ video of, Mo of Mother Braxton saying that Vince put his hands on her daughter. So we'll bring it back to current. Um, would I stay? I mean, I would like to believe that I would not stay. because Regardless. I, yes. I okay. am of the opinion that if a man is willing to do it once, that he's likely to do it again. again. Okay. Um, but, you know, I don't know if my opinion changes because this is my husband and the father of my child because right. Tamar and Vince have a child together. Mm -hmm. So then right. I don't know if, if my mindset changes mm -hmm. a little bit and makes me more amenable to working it out. Um, but I think regardless, counseling is necessary because if nothing else, they need to co-parent and they right. have to have a good relationship in order to effectively co-parent. So, um, Counseling definitely. I don't know. If I that like would to, be enough to bring you back. Right. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't know either. I, I think I'm. I'm with you on that one. I don't think that. Like I feel like once you lay hands on someone, then it's that's just that's just who you are, and it's kind of difficult for you to change that, or for me to forgive that or trust you. I think that would be my biggest issue. Like even if that person went to counseling and it's like, I'm cured, I'm better, I know how to better handle my anger, it would be my hesitance to be close to that person. I'm like, what if you do it again or what, you know? Yeah. So I think that would be an issue. But, yeah, good with the co-parenting thing. Yeah. I think <laughs> counseling would, would be a good idea. Yeah, it definitely be hard for me because I don't forget and it's really hard for me to forgive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, really hard, yeah. So we will move on and uh -huh. we'll go back, to, we'll go to the literary world and the world of politics, mm. something that you are very familiar with. Mm, <laughs> oh Lord, I don't know. <laughs> um, I <laughs> talk about politics too much on this show. <laughs> Our executive producer, Ruth, knows this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to lean on you a lot for, for some of the insight that you may have. But we're going to talk about Donna Brazil in her upcoming mm -hmm. book titled Hacks. The inside story of the break-ins and breakdowns that put Donald Trump in the White House. 
That's a that's a mouthful. Yes, yes. <laughs> in it in her book, it looks like Hillary Clinton's campaign gained power over DNC operations because it loaned money to the DNC. Kizzy, what do you make of the bombshells in this book? You know, it's funny. Like I, okay, I'm usually very very opinionated when it comes to politics. I'm so tired of relitigating the 2016 primary. I think that for me is like the biggest thing. I was like, when Donna Brazil came out with these bombshells, I was like, really? Like now? Like if this was happening during the primary, why didn't you say it during the primary? I think that was, that was my thing. Okay, fine. She's like, it's never going to be a good time to talk about it. So she talked about it. But at the same time, it's like we knew, even looking at the primary as lay people, that the DNC had their thumb on the scale for Hillary Clinton. They simply did. Um, she was an insider. She'd been a Democrat for years and years. And so they were like, we're going to get our girl in. And, you know, they were pushing Bernie Sanders to the side. I mean, even when they, you know, um, scheduled all of the debates, it was like on off days when, you know, people wouldn't be watching. They hardly had any debates even scheduled. So it was clear. So this is like more of the same. And now there's an added layer that she was able to do that because she'd given them so much money. It was like $1.5 million or something like that, or, or more. Um, I don't want to mess up the numbers. But they were bankrupt. So they were like, thank you. Okay, so if you want to, you know, have a little say in how this goes or this goes or this goes, we're letting you do that. Yeah. Um, and supposedly it was just supposed to um, relate to the general election and not the primary. But, I mean, if, if she's given the money long ahead of the primary, I, I find it hard <laughs> to believe that that wouldn't happen. So that's my whole thing. Now I feel like this is just another indication that the Democratic Party has serious work to do. The DNC has serious work to do in getting people to trust them again. I mean, mm -hmm. you're putting forth candidates that are not really popular. You're not really speaking to the issues that people really care about, people of color too. Um, it, it, it's, it's really dispiriting for me. <laughs> I'm like, please, like, please, let's like move forward and find something that can unify yeah. the Democratic Party. I mean, I was really surprised because I, I'm not as entrenched into politics, especially as of late as maybe you are, because yeah. I've just, I guess I've like, just been turned off by so many things that have been happening in the world. But I'm going to tune back in and get more of my pulse on it. But I was really surprised because I, I watched um, Sunday news mm -hmm. programming and I watched George Stephanopoulos and oh. she has been a regular on his show and so I always picked, uh, had this association with her as a Democrat as one of these leading Democrats and just really yeah. down for the Democrats and then here's a book that's just exposing all these um, secrets and I'm like Ooh. and I'm like what's going on and Ooh. so then she came back and said oh no it wasn't rigged so she she came out and said basically it was rigged and mm -hmm. she was shocked it was like a cancer on the DNC right and then she comes back a few days later no I never said that I was, it was not rigged so I'm mm -hmm. like either you're not quite telling the truth in the book or you're bowing to pressure from other people who are saying how could you say this mm -hmm. so it's just you know she's going to sell a lot of books yeah <laughs> and I think it, I, I think it highlights some of the uh frustration or the sentiment that some people had during the primary was that Hillary is just the part of the establishment. Mm -hmm. She is really entrenched she, and she's not progressive or she's not new life, new she's energy. Not, yeah, she's not inspiring, the, giving right. them that and, energy and flavor. And I, I remember uh, thinking and reading some during the, the campaign trail that I felt as though she being Hillary rested on her laurels, on her name, maybe her husband's name, mm -hmm. and her her extensive history as a public official, and yeah. didn't really campaign like somebody who was really hungry for it. So okay. now that this, yeah, well, that's what people were so saying. Now saying this that she book, was entitled. And now all this that. book has come out, and then now it kind of makes sense because she had loaned money, and there was <laughs> some some power uh, at play. So she could probably just like, oh, I'm good. I, I loaned them money. I'm going to get my due. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much what happened. And, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, like, there was a power sharing agreement and that anybody could do that. Yeah. So later on, you know, that, you know, Bernie Sanders had the option, but, you know, he never took it anyway. So, yeah, okay, relitigating the 2016 election <laughs> over. Please, let's look to 2020 and even quicker 2018 and see if we can, you know, recoup some ground. <laughs> Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the very 
prince is coming. Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I, Groogs, Zink or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you. Come look at Mr. Feather. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. All right, so speaking of recouping some ground or losing some ground, I think is better. Um, recently, Tyrese, damn Tyrese, took the social media. all been through the show today. I know, poor Tyrese. <laughs> so he took the social media crying, crying, Keisha, over the situation that his ex-wife was accusing him of child abuse in an attempt to keep him away from his 10-year-old daughter. Now, happily, fortunately, the case has been dropped, but what do you think about, you know, taking the, to social media and crying and all that? Do you think that's a sign of weakness, because some people on social media did, or does it show sensitivity? What do you think? Well, you know, I will be transparent, and as one who has shed quite a few tears in my life. I don't think of tears as a sign of weakness. Right. For me, a lot of times my tears are out of frustration mm -hmm. and of anger. So it's either I yell at you, I punch you, or I throw something. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just cry and get it out that way. Mm -hmm. and, and as far as men, I have seen some men cry in my lifetime. And I don't, I don't think of them as any less masculine. I right. think there's a lot of strength in being vulnerable, oh, yes. a lot of strength Preach, in <laughs> and, and recognizing your feelings and your emotions and not being afraid to express them. And I think that I will say generally in the African-American culture, we have very rigid views of what being a man is and what Toxic being masculinity and what yes. masculinity is. Mm -hmm. And if anybody veers from that, then they're viewed as less than a man. And that's really unfortunate because that leads to people leaving, leading not a lot of lives that aren't true to who they are. Right. And it leaves us as women to deal with emotionally stunted <laughs> men. <Yes>. <laughs> so, I mean, it makes our lives even harder, our daily lives harder. And I think that we need to get out of that. Tyrese is a man who is grieving over the fact that he cannot see his daughter. Yes. And that not only could he not see his daughter, his reputation as a father was being impugned. Yeah. He's He yeah. was accused of being a child abuser. Exactly. And that's not, that's not something that you, you should take lightly. Mm -hmm. And so he had that and then the financial pressures because he said in his videos that the legal fees were draining his bank account. Right. And, and so, then on top of that, The Rock won't do the movie and that he's, that's another check that he's not going to cash. Right, right but I mean, look... If Tyrese wants a check, he should have been nice to The Rock so he can get a roll up in the spin-off series. That's another story. <laughs> that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's another story. So I will close by saying that um, I, I applaud Tyrese for being vulnerable. But at a certain point, it made me uncomfortable because it was starting to show signs of some kind of mental breakdown. That's what I want to say because I think that that's really the issue here. Now that he's crying, because like, I agree with you. Crying is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign that you are in touch with your emotions. A lot of people, you know, men don't even care, you know, whether they, they have their kids in their lives or not. So the fact that he's crying about that, I think, is really healthy and powerful. But he's been so unstable and erratic on social media lately, both with the ranting against The Rock and, you know, coming after, you know, Tank or Genuine or what have It's just very strange. And I think he needs to, like, take a step back and work it out and stay off social media, so... 
someone take yeah. his phone. Our photo of the week is a black and white photo of Jennifer Lopez and Alex Rodriguez, aka A Rod, in Vanity Fair. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Our motivational quote of the week is, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. That's by Benjamin Franklin and it comes to us through Denise Hurley. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. I'm sure I just don't know where the time goes. I don't, because that's going to do it for this week's <laughs> edition of What's the 4 and one Your Smart Source for Urban Lifestyle and Entertainment News. Until next week, check out our website, what's the 4 and onecom Yes, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 and one TV. And now you can download our podcast at iTunes, Google Play Music, and Stitcher. Yes, I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of our special host, Keisha Wilson, thank you for watching What's the 4 one We'll catch you next time. 411, who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411. What's the 411? The 411, what's the 411? They got the 411. We got the 411. What's the 411? They got the 411.